Hi friends, I started collecting my zinnia flowers so that they can just be a d beautiful display for people to see and um, if pollinators need to come in here and, and pollinate they can um, but for the duration of their life blooming they can still look pretty in a, in a vessel and then when it finishes maturing the seeds will hopefully have a better chance of maturing and then I can have the seeds and then the plants will still grow more flowers and bloom some more. So my Diablo Cosmos are starting to wane and they're not really giving too many flowers anymore and my True Hyssop has started going to seed which I've collected several of these already but the bottom is still nice and green so and it's making more blooms so I'm hoping it'll keep doing so. I should probably collect some of this true hyssop actually I didn't even think of it. Um, wash wash them and dry them because um, true hyssop can be put into a uh, tea and it smells real good and here is my Melissa officinalis my lemon balm coming back. I had just cut off a bunch and washed them and dried the leaves for future teas. And the whorehound is growing like crazy. Actually, it's starting to form seeds, so I gotta collect those. And I have been collecting the seeds for the bee balm. Here I have a ton of tomato plants that just grew like crazy, but for some reason it's mostly greenery, just the leaves. Um, I don't know if it's because I recently put a lot of fish emulsion, but it's mostly got greens instead of flowers and fruit. Now it did flower a lot and maybe it did make some fruit. I did see some, but something's been eating all my fruits, my tomatoes. Likewise for this bed, it's filled with tomatoes and I'm just gathering a couple at a time that haven't been eaten by something and collecting it so that I can make pasta and other things with it. Here is my Ong Choi, my Kang Kong, my Asian water spinach and I had a video prior about growing this. It's the best vegetable ever. It's my favorite and what I'm going to do as I'm learning more and more about it, it's, I'm like such a fan of it and because it's not native to the United States um, I think it doesn't have that many pests that know what to do with it and it's in the morning glory family of plants so that's why if you look at these flowers they're that beautiful um, trumpet-ish looking flower just like the morning glory or the moon flowers and I studied up on it and you can collect the seeds from this so I'm gonna try to collect some seeds and grow this next year and if I am not successful in growing it sometime around February because I want to get as many crops of this as possible next year um, because I make this delicious salad with it um, then I will go to the store and get the stalks and grow them from stock they are not cold hardy, so I don't expect it to survive this through the winter. And my Linnaeus marigolds were blooming so beautifully just a week ago, and now it's looking pretty dead, dying, because um, a couple weeks ago it was in the hundreds, and we had a heat wave, then last week it was in the 90s, and 80s and it's been gradually cooling down so this week it's going to be in the 70s it was really overcast um, like really foggy especially two days ago and look at that tomato I gotta get it before something gets to it but I'm waiting for it to blush um, but I'm just kind of like 
noticing that a lot of things are just kind of uh, waning, not really producing that much. And uh, it's just a battle now because the days are getting shorter and it's cooling down. The nighttime temperatures were in the 60s, now in the, they're in their 50s. Uh, Fahrenheit and the days are in their 70s Fahrenheit as well. Again lots of tomato plants that I stuck the suckers into the ground and they they've been growing but real slow at making the blooms and the fruit so I probably won't be getting any fruit from it but at least it's keeping my soil here nice and cool and um so I might have to pluck them out pretty soon if they don't produce anything and put in some other vegetables. Here are my pretty mazurkia zinnias. So pretty. Um, when they start to get old, they kind of look yucky, but also it's um, suffering from powdery mildew. But otherwise it looks really gorgeous. And same with my Kilimanjaro marigolds. When they're in full bloom, they're so pretty because they're white and um, lush looking blooms full of petals. Look at that, gorgeous. And sometimes it looks white and sometimes it looks kind of off-white flower to use for a wedding or something if, if you can catch it at the right time. And some more tomato plants. This one's dying. Gotta pull that one out. And it, this was a year that was really strange for growing things because a lot of the things that would have grown in the heat for some reason took a long time to grow. So like I had a Minnesota midget, um, what do you call it? Minnesota midget plant that is stuck into these beds and it took forever to grow and now it's finally growing but it's the end of the season and I don't think I'm gonna get any fruit from it. Same with my zucchinis. I tried to grow those like two or three times this season and I'll show you. I got some tiny plants but I don't think I'm gonna get fruit from them this year. So one of my main features for this video was to show you this. Um, I stuck the seeds into this bed a long time ago. It never really bloomed or grew. Suddenly it grew towards the end of the summer. It just kept growing and growing really tall like a beanstalk. And finally it started to bloom from the top and then coming down it's finally blooming down here. But this is so gorgeous. It's like a huge bloom that takes up the palm of my hand, the whole palm of my hand. It's like a reddish orange, hot orange looking flowers. Really gorgeous. This is the Mexican sunflower torch. Um, however, um, it's starting to, it's like way too tall. It's like eight or, or something, eight or nine feet tall. Um, kind of getting out of hand, falling over. Um, so next time I'm going to try to like tie it and prop it up and grow it elsewhere. And my other pink zinnias. So I never really knew what kind of flowers to grow in the fall and winter. So I found out that this alyssum that I grew early in the spring is going to be a good fall plant into possibly the winter. So I just deadheaded the yucky stuff and it's coming back. This is the um, slightly purple one.
So once the rest of this stuff dies off, I will pull them out, yank them out, and have some flowers still at least. And late to the game is this pretty pink zinnia. It's a different shade than the other ones, the purple prints and the other one. And I love it so much. Some beautiful canary yellow ones. Lots of basils that just barely came too. They took a long time. Same as everything else, I don't know why. Um, had to harvest a couple cabbages to give to the chickens because something ate it. This is the only one I kept and I'm hoping I can get a cabbage out of that one. Gotta harvest some of these basil. Ooh, I didn't see that patch of tomatoes right there. Oh, so the Patio Choice is a wonderful variety. It's a hybrid. However, early in the season, it gave me plump, plump yellow um, tomatoes. Then it started to kind of not really produce, and I gave it some fish fertilizer, fish emulsion. And now it's making tons of fruit again, like a second season, second harvest. So here are the zucchini plants that were late to the party and they're growing powdery mildew. There's another bloom, but yeah, it's really tiny and it's probably not going to make me any fruit this year. Here is my very sad looking uh, lavender, Spanish lavender. I harvested all the green bits. And I'm just going to have my son go through with a chainsaw and just take off all the tops of this because it's falling over. And I don't mind that it's falling over the edge of this garden bed um, towards the sidewalk. But um, if you know anything about lavender, you have to cut the thick brambles, the thick branches every year so that it'll grow upright and healthy and nice. So this is what I did. I harvested the green parts of the lavender. I washed it three times. I'm not eating this, but what I'm doing is I am going to strip the leaves off and then dry the leaves and um, jar them so that when I have a project for potpourri or other things scented, then I can use this. So all lavenders are edible. However, this variety will emit like a more bitter flavor to things. So it's best used for its scent. The variety that's edible are the English lavender varieties. Those are edible and you can use it in, in baking or other things. So all I did was give a bunch of amaranth to the chickens and then I went and harvested the eggs and that's how many we got so far. It's still mid-morning. They still have time yet to um, make more eggs. But what I'm going to do is put this away and start harvesting some chili peppers and other things in the back garden. So I harvested and triple washed this goji, these goji canes that were kind of overhanging my, and blocking my path. So now I have a clearer path and I have a bunch of gro goji greens. Um, the goji berries, a lot of them have been eaten by birds, just wild birds. Uh, but that's okay, I got a few. And so what I'm going to do with these is um, take the leaves out off the stems and dry them and use them for tea. Or you can also have them in soups to eat as well very nutritious. So I had some peppers and some basils growing underneath a massive amount of um, super sweet 100 tomato plants and some other variety of cherry tomato plants and it was just growing like crazy. We meant to uh, put up a trellis to um, 
let those plants climb on them, but we never managed to build it. So basically it just was growing like brambly and we just collected as many tomatoes as we could. So now we cleared that out and um, we're sowing some various seeds. So coral carrot and wasabi radish over here. And then on this half, it's gonna be daikon radish and Napa cabbages. And um, so it's gonna be some succession planting going on. Some things getting harvested and some things being pulled out and um, t in preparation. So this was direct sowed, but we have to get other things in as soon as we pull s some things out. So let me show you what we started sowing. There are some Chijimisai and Tatsoi in these cups that had some tomato seedlings that ended up dying. So I'm just re reusing the cups so that they don't go to waste. And then over here I grew various um, seedlings of garlic chives, um, parsley, just a bunch of herbs. Uh, Thyme, lupin, um, parsley, vanidium, burpee, orange prints, flowers, African daisy, delphinium. I just kind of looked at the seed packets to see when they said to sow the particular things so that I can um, grow those things for this season because I didn't quite know what kind of flowers bloom in the fall and winter. And over here are some uh, brassicas. I think that's a weed. I'm not sure, but some tatsoi. So at some point, I may have to reseed some of these if they didn't, if they don't come up but I have to transplant them into my beds. I'm growing some echinacea in here. I've always wanted to grow echinacea, but it's never popped up for me, and it looks like it now is. Um, I got this cute little uh, vase, not even on sale or anything, from Lowe's. I thought it was really cute, this pot. My gardenia is looking really good. I, I didn't know it's such a slow grower. Um, I may have to add soil down below. I also have jasmine, which smells so good. Both of these. So I have it near my entryway. Ooh, my purple basil has started blooming. Mmm. And it looks so pretty. Let me have a taste because I haven't tasted this variety yet. Mmm. Pretty good flavor. Recently I had a pink hollyhock volunteer to grow in my parkway. So I let it bloom and then go to seed. So I harvested all of these and I'm going to collect the seeds. So that's basically what you do. You just pull off these petals and then you collect all these seeds. Each little disc is a seed. So you can get, so that's gonna be one plant, that's another plant. I mean, you could get tons of plants from just one seed pod. And look at how many pods I've got, tons of them. So like I said, I've been collecting tons of zinnia flowers. Look at how gorgeous this color is. It's so bright pink. It might be a different variety from this other one. However, this one I harvested about four days prior to this. But really gorgeous. And I love the way they look. And the blooms are so pretty and they stand out so well. And I love the yellow center compared to the pink petals. Um, same with, I also have red, um, the yellow, the canary, and the mazurkia. 
and I have some luminosa pink ones and some Lilliput zinnias. Here's the red variety. So this one came from my cherry red zinnia and this one I think came from a mix of seeds. So they may be two different varieties because the way they bloom is different but I also find that early in the season the flowers look really full and later in the season when they're suffering they only make petals like this. And finally let me show you this is just what I do every week. Um, I just collect seeds from all the plants. I just collect all the deadheads and I just let them dry because if I take them directly in, which um, I made that mistake of doing that, then what happens is it, it'll bring in bugs like these tiny little um, larvae and you want all that stuff to come out of this and you want it to dry properly out in the air so if I'm keeping it outside and once it's dried sufficiently about two weeks then I'll bring bring them in and sort them out into different envelopes so that I can have um, everything bug free and it'll be preserved better for the following year. Um, what happens is little butterflies and stuff they lay their um, eggs in they pollinate the flowers they lay their eggs the eggs hatch there's little larvae and they're doing whatever they're doing in the flowers until they you know make their um, wings and fly off so that's what I'm doing look at how many I have there that was just from a week and a half of growing or harvesting them